What's going on, everybody? Give me just a moment. Can y'all hear me at all? Yeah, hear me all right. Because obviously, All right. Can you hear me good? Because I don't know if my microphone is trying to act funny or not. But we are going to uh, we're gonna keep this show going. We're going to get everything started. A lot of y'all say y'all can hear me loud and clear, so that's a good thing, and we're going to uh, get this road, show on the road. All right, let's get it. Thank y'all for tuning in today, and we are going to have a good time, nevertheless. I appreciate everybody being here. We're just having a small bit of technical, small bit of difficulty, but we're going to make it through nevertheless. And everything so interrupt this road on the show. Don't 
Good evening, good evening, good evening, Titan Nation. How's everybody doing? Thank y'all for sticking it with me and welcome in to a brand new edition of Titans and Truth. I'm your man, Chris, a.k.a. Blue Enforcer, and we got a very good episode on tap for this evening and for tonight. Uh, you know, just had a small bit of technical difficulty for a second, but we are live and kicking, and so uh, we're going to get everything going just fine. Uh, first off, make sure y'all share this show out. Uh, we got, um, you know, of course, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Make sure y'all share the show out. And please hit that like button as well as uh, everybody starts to get on in and everything. Uh, definitely going to give a few shout outs. Uh, always AZ Mick tightened up. Uh, we got AZ Mick tightened up. Chris Frazier up in here. Uh, we got some people on Facebook. Glad everybody can hear me. We got Big Hawk up in here. What's going on? Uh, what's going on with that? Isaiah. We got everybody in here. So, uh, Michael Rossi, what's going on? Is everybody hearing me pretty good? Everybody's not going in and out. Hopefully, uh, everything is going good. We finna uh, really get into um, talking about, uh, you know, the next game coming up with the Indianapolis Colts and kind of closing the book, of course, on um, the Chicago Bears game. And I have a very big announcement uh, to give out um for the game tomorrow so be looking forward to that towards the end of the show uh with that but let's go ahead and get started uh make sure y'all hit that like button for me please uh as more of you start to come on in here and we get more people in uh with that so smash the heck out of that like button uh, and everything but uh also before i do get started i want to give a salute to all the veterans uh, out there, all the service men and women uh, in our military. Uh, of course, my guy uh, Preston Rounds, of course, uh, president of the Titans uh, fan club here in Memphis. My guy Larry Garman, my uh, beautiful sister Ashley Hunter, uh, my homies uh, Terrell Gasquay, LaShawn Clayton, um, my cousin Sean Tillman, of course, uh, and among many, many others, and to any and everybody who served in the military, my best friend Chris, uh, aka I Am Nutso, got a big song out on my Facebook page. I make sure y'all check that out. But to all the service men and women out there, whether it is Army, Navy, Marines, um, Air Force, Coast Guard, uh, National Guard, uh, it doesn't matter. I give you the salute. I thank you for your service. Thank you for everything that you do. Uh, and I just, you know, I appreciate all of y'all doing uh, that serving your country uh, and everything. Cause that's, I don't know if that's something that I can actually do. I don't know if I have the guts to do it, but, but shout out to all the service men and women of our amazing military. So, Johnny Bell, Brandon's up in there saying uh, Johnny needs to get involved more. Um, I do agree with that. Uh, and we'll definitely talk about that because they're using him more in blocking situations um, with, of course, the injury to Taylor Lewan. But let's get started with uh, the Titan News of the Week. Of course, again, we're going to kind of shut the door on the Bears game because, again, the Bears – the Titans defeated the Bears 24 to 17. Uh, they're six and two now. Um, 
a lot of great things came out of that game. It looks like the defense was well improved. Desmond King made an immediate impact uh, in the game. Um, Jayon Brown looks like he's slowly starting around in the form. Of course, um, of course, our very own Big Jeff was doing his thing as usual uh, and everything with that. And again, of course, our new corner, uh, Desmond King, uh, seen here. Of course, I'm going to try to get him a picture in the Titans jersey uh, with that. So uh, big shout out to those guys. They did some great things. We'll talk about the two-tone blue star of the week and dunce of the day uh, in just a few moments. But that was a good game. Uh, offensively, you know, there were some things that were left to be desired. Uh, but A.J. Brown did his thing as usual, four catches, 101 yards, and a score. Uh, just a a very good effort, uh, a very good all-around game. Could have been better, but glad it wasn't worse. So now that we closed the book on that game, you know, a lot of people wonder, well, the defense improved. Is it more that the defense got better, or was it that the Bears' offense was just that bad? And I honestly don't know what the answer to that is. I mean, I think it's a little bit of both, but I do think the, off the defense did very well improve uh, in this game. Some news coming out um, that came out today um, in the world. First off, Adori. Um, you know, was activated uh, onto the main roster. So he's off of the designated to return list and is now back on the active 53-man roster. But he will be out for this for uh, tomorrow's game against the Indianapolis Colts. I'm hoping with the extra days of rest and 10 days before Baltimore that we get ready to see a Dory against Baltimore, but I don't know how that's going to go. I don't know why they're holding him up. Maybe the injury is not as... You know, it's still not as completely healed as uh, it should be. We know that we know that Mike Vrabel is coach cautious. We know that he's very cautious. He's not going to take any chances uh, with anybody's injury. And so, obviously, I'm wearing my 22, my Derrick Henry. I have to show that. But you know, he's not going to take any chances uh, with injuries going on. He wants everybody to be 100% healthy or ready to contribute. But uh, some other good news, some good news that did come out, which was very interesting. J.D. Jadavion Clowney uh, was a full go yesterday and today, along with Roger Saffold. So both of those guys are going to be up and ready to go on Thursday night. And actually, while I'm at it, here is the injury report that we have right now. Uh, Roger Saffo, Clowney, Dennis Kelly is going to go as well. Um, out, of course, Adoree Jackson. He was activated to the 53-man roster. Adam Humphreys is still in concussion protocol. He will be out. Michael Pruitt, uh, even though word is that he did avoid serious injury, uh, he is still going to be out for this game. And Dane Crookshank was placed on IR for the second time, so he is now out for the remainder of the season. On the other side, for the Indianapolis Colts, bad news. Uh, good news is Jack Doyle, who has given the Titans fits and what's going on on Facebook, is out for this game. He had a, uh, a I believe he was out due to, to, a, to a concussion. Uh, as well, but bad news is, and I'm I'm not really surprised this happened. T. Y. Hilton is going to play. He practiced, and now he's going to go. They held him out against Baltimore. I was kind of hoping they would hold him out of this game as well, but unfortunately, they did not. And T. Y. Hilton, who has caused the Titans nothing but trouble over the years, is back in the lineup. Um, with that, so that is the injury report, uh, right now. Uh, also for the Colts, questionable was another tight end, um, Mo Ali Cox, I believe is his name. He, um, he, um, is, um, questionable for this game. So, um, that is the injury report that we have right now, um, going into tomorrow's game. 
And, you know, it's a good thing to see, you know, Clowney, I don't know, he, he is just, he's battling through it. I mean, I, I got to give him credit. He's toughening it out because, you know, he could have definitely said, you know what, I'm shutting it down, or, you know, they could have held him back. But, hey, they're not, you know, and that does help the pass rush some. So Clowney being in there is good. They may limit his snaps. I'm hoping for the love of God they go to four pass rushers. Go ahead with Clowney, Landry, Derek Robeson showed you something, and just have Wyatt Ray up to help protect for Clowney so that way you're not killing him on that meniscus, and then that way he gets to rest for the next 10 days before Baltimore. So that's something that's going to be very important. Um, but that is the injury report uh, that we do have. So now let us give our two-tone blue star of the week. Oh, and before I get to that, also the Roger Sappho and Dennis Kelly being in is a big deal because, I mean, you already got Ty Sambrello on the left side, you know, stepping in for Taylor Wan. I definitely didn't want to go into this game with Jameel Douglas starting at left guard. I would have been terrified beyond belief if – um if Jameel Douglas had to go in there um, and play any snaps as far as I'm concerned uh, with that. So I'm glad that Roger Saffo is going to be in there instead of Jameel Douglas because Jameel Douglas is horrible, plain and simple. Um, Facebook says, what's up with Dennis Kelly? It was some type of knee issue, but he is going to go. He is going to play uh, in this game. So, again, now it is time to give out our two-tone blue star of the week. I put this up on Facebook um, on Sunday uh, when I was doing the uh, the post game, uh, when I did the post game show. So um, you know, I definitely told y'all um, what did y'all think uh, would be the guy, and um, I'm actually trying to pull that up right now. So. Uh, give me just a second. Looks like it's on. okay. Uh, give me just a minute. I had it on my on the uh the group page. So let's see. Okay, got it right here. Yes, your two tone blue star of the weeks. Um, definitely got a lot of uh feedback. Uh, definitely got a lot of feedback, got a lot of nominations. I'm going to go through them on Facebook. If you got them, uh, if you got them on here right now, list them down right here. And then, uh, of course we will definitely choose. I got from, um, Giselle, uh, Giselle Miller. Uh, he says star of the week, AJ Brown. Uh, Chris Frazier says AJ Brown. Um, let's see. Courtney Jones said Desmond King. Khalil, Khalil Steele says AJ Brown. Uh, Daryl John says J Rob for picking up uh Desmond King. Uh, Al Pierce Orlestruck says uh, Big Jeff Jeffrey Simmons tighten up load going with uh, a different one, Daquan Jones. Uh, for star of the week, we see Eric Berry uh, on YouTube saying uh, Big Jeff. Um, Ken Moore, our guy from uh, K Moore Sports, he says AJ Brown. Uh, AZ Mix says Big Jeff. So those are a lot of uh, nominees out there. I uh, had a, you know, like I said, you got J Rob, you got um, one for Desmond King. Um, definitely got one for, uh, got a couple for Big Jeff. So um, Joe Hawk says uh, Desmond King. I definitely like that. And Big Jeff. So uh, definitely uh, got some popular ones right there. Uh, Hawk says, who was that Borders guy? That would be Breon Borders, who they got off the practice squad, uh, who is now, I believe, permanently on the 53-man roster. Uh, he's about – he came out of Duke. Uh, I think he's about six foot, 210 pounds, six foot, 200-pound corner. Um, we'll definitely be seeing this week because he's going to get tested. Uh, Borders is definitely going to get tested. He had about nine tackles. He did pretty well. He didn't get burned or anything. Um, you know, he didn't get just seriously burned or anything on the play. And I think there was a play where, um, I want to say it was, uh, Mooney 
who uh went up for a touchdown, who went up for a catch in the end zone. And Breon Borders did a good job of making sure you pushed out of bounds and only one foot uh fell in bounds. So that kept a touchdown off the board. So uh that was a good job by him on that. Um so and let's see, Captain Trips, what's going on uh, and everything. But this this is a tough one. Uh, this is definitely a tough one. Um, man, A.J. Brown or Big Jeff? Ooh, that's a good choice. That is a very good choice. But I'm going to have to say the two-tone blue star of the week for this game and – I'm going to have to go with Big Jeffrey Simmons. I got to go with Big Jeffrey Simmons. And this is why. You know, with A.J. Brown, he had a very big game. Four catches, 101 yards. Had a very nice touchdown. That was a great dime uh, by Tannehill. So I got to put him as an honorable mention. But I do want to see A.J. Brown do it consistently more against the better corners. And, you know... I want to see him get 100 yard games consistently, um, or uh, make an impact. Now he has he does have uh, a touchdown catch in five straight games, which is a very good thing. But the reason I'm choosing Big Jeff is because he's been doing it all year long. I mean, he could as D as D comes on and says. Big Jeff could definitely be a defensive player of the year candidate. He could definitely be in the conversation, um, AFC defensive player of the year. He should definitely be uh, at least mentioned in the conversation because, I mean, he does so many things. He brings the rush. He always gets his hands up, either bats some balls down or he bats them in the air, which causes interceptions. He's caused at least three or four interceptions, and he nearly had an interception himself uh, in this game. So, I mean, Big Jeff has done some big, big things with those big paws. And, you know, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about Jeff coming up, but Big Jeff has done a lot of things. And I will say, again, honorable mention, A.J. Brown, Breon Borders, because I was impressed. Desmond King in his first game. And also Daquan Jones. I noticed him a lot on the field, uh, definitely. And, I mean, that was a shout-out big time to the defense. Harold Landry coming through with a sack. Derek Roberson was coming through with some big-time pressure and things like that. So, I mean, the defense as a whole really played a heck of a lot of good football uh, yesterday. But whenever there is a star of the week, y'all also know there is a dunce of the day as well. And James Bryant coming in. What's up, James? Says he's entering Aaron Donald territory. If he keeps this up the rest of the year, maybe gets a few more sacks or something like that. He very well might get in that company, but I want to see how the rest of the year pans out for him before. But I will say, Jeffrey Simmons is, is he's off to a great start. He is off to a good start on the way to doing that. So he is a big-time problem. He is a guy that the offensive line on the other side says, we better make sure we block 98. And he's got he's got a matchup of his own tomorrow night, so we're going to definitely talk about that. But now, you know there's a dunce of the day. And uh, let's see, on Fa let's see, on Facebook, say YouTube not working right now, watching on Facebook. Hey, that's cool. Uh, appreciate everybody watching. Uh, I apologize for any technical difficulties. Uh, if you're having problems on YouTube, I am broadcasting it on uh, my personal Facebook page, as well as the Titans and Truth, uh, the TNT Enforcers page. And if you haven't joined that page, make sure you do and uh, hit uh, the subscribe to the channel uh, and everything with that. But dunce of the day, uh, dunce of the day, if you're having some issues uh, on YouTube, you can go to the Facebook page and, um, and the Facebook page, I'm playing it there too. Uh, it's on my personal Facebook page uh, and also on the uh, T 
AT&T uh, Enforcers page. So if you ask to join, uh, I will make sure uh, to add you on. But who would be your dunce of the day? And um, I definitely know of one. Uh, <laughs> Hawk says uh, Vic Beasley is still the dunce. Uh, of course, he got cut. So I ain't worried about him. Eric Berry says Corey Davis. Isaiah says Corey Davis. Um, and yes, uh, Corey Davis did lose his brother uh, to cancer. So um, definitely rest in peace and prayers out uh, to Corey Davis's family uh, on the loss of his brother Titus Davis, who um, passed uh, due to uh, cancer. So um, definitely very sorry to hear about that. Um, but he did have some, um, but he def definitely had some bad drops that he normally uh, would not have. And again, if um, if the feed is giving you trouble on uh, YouTube, come on over to Facebook, uh, my personal page, Chris A. Newell, or, um, or the TNT Enforcers page, definitely come there. Um, with that, I definitely apologize um, for um, any issues on that. I am definitely broadcasting on um, on Facebook. Uh, anybody that's watching on Facebook, let me know if um, if it's going good on there as well as far as the feed. And uh, and I will definitely check that once the show is over uh, if we have any issues uh, with that. But let's see some other dunks of the day on Facebook. Um, I know some people were uh, Sharon Cushman was talking about Tannehill. As a dunce, uh, Daryl jo John says Arthur Smith, uh, for dunce. Al Pierce says Corey Davis. Um, let's see, Tighten Up Low says Rashawn Evans. Uh, Ken, Ken Moore says uh, Tannehill, um, for dunce of the day. And you know, uh, I don't know when uh, Corey Davis's brother passed, um, uh, exactly. Uh, let me see. I might be able to find that out as far as when he passed. Because, I mean, if it was on Sunday or around the weekend, I could definitely understand, even though he had some terrible, terrible drops um, in that game uh, and everything. So let me see if I can find out um, when he passed. Uh, let's see. I'm looking right now because I was going to mention that. Uh, so, yeah. Again, if you were on fate on YouTube and um if you're on YouTube and you're having issues, come on over to Facebook and um and I'm just uh doing that now. Just a second. There we go. I'm just making sure of that because I know that uh, some people have said there's been some uh, issues on the live feed. Uh, definitely apologized about that. Um, yeah. So let's see. I'm actually finding this out, of course, his brother, uh, Titus Davis, played at Central Michigan. Um, oh, okay. He passed away today uh, due to kidney cancer. He passed today uh, with that. So I don't know if Corey Davis is going to play tomorrow. If so, he's going to be playing with a very heavy heart. Uh, that could be, you know, good motivation, uh, you know, playing in his brother's memory. Uh, with that, I'm pretty sure the team is going to do something for him. Uh, in regards to that, um, so yeah, for Sunday, I'm gonna have to say the two tone. I'm gonna have to say the dunce of the day was definitely Corey Davis uh, for those drops uh, that he had because he had just a couple of terrible drops. And I mean, also, I mean, Ferkser had some drops too. Uh, Rashawn Evans is definitely an honorable mention because I mean. He hasn't really showed up at all much this season. I don't know what's going on with Rashawn Evans. And, I mean, I'm kind of concerned with Arthur Smith 
a little bit because he, you know, has had a couple of bad games calling plays. You know, I mean, the Pittsburgh game, we barely had the ball in the first half. The Cincinnati game was just kind of off. And the Chicago game, I mean, it just seemed like we weren't 100% together uh, in the game offensively. And so, I mean, if you're going to be a head coach, you got to be able to be creative. And that's something that Arthur Smith hasn't exactly shown in the last few weeks. So he needs to show he could be a little bit more creative. Um, on Facebook, uh, someone says, still not impressed with Shane Bowen or whoever is the outside linebacker coach. No, Shane Bowen is the outside linebackers coach. Uh, he's also calling plays on defense. Zach Carpenter, what's going on with you? Welcome in. Um, on Facebook says, ever since the Bronco game, Evans hasn't been the same. Evans just hasn't been around all year for some reason. So I don't, I don't know what's up with Rashawn Evans, but he needs to get his act together. He does. He needs to get his act together and get it, get his head in the game. Um, with that, so um, and uh, shout out to Joseph Rodriguez gave me a good question on um on our uh, Facebook, which we'll get to uh, in a bit. Yes, uh, Isaiah. Yes, he passed away today uh, on Wednesday. Uh, Two tone zone. What's going on with you? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely got to tighten up. Definitely. Um, and I have to check that out. So uh, definitely let me know. Uh, we'll definitely have to talk about that. Def I'll definitely have to check that out, uh, Two Tone Zone. Absolutely. But done to the day, Corey Davis. But again, rest in peace to his brother, Titus Davis. Uh, my prayers are definitely with him uh, and his family at this time. But now. Let us go into pick my brain. Pick, pick my brain. I'm going to uh, get a few questions from you, and uh, we'll definitely talk about that. And uh, also, um, got an announcement before we do go into pick my brain um, that's going to be coming later on in the show. So stay tuned for that. Got a big announcement uh, in, in regards to the game tomorrow. So uh, go ahead and give me some questions out, and uh, we'll definitely go ahead and get with them. So I uh, got a question from Joseph Rodriguez. He said on Facebook, he said, with Adam Humphrey still being out with a concussion from the Bengals game, if you're, if you're Coach Vrabel, would you let Adam play in the Ravens game up in Baltimore or have him in the next matchup against the Colts in Indianapolis just to be safe? I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. If he passes concussion protocol before the Ravens game, I'm playing him. I'm playing him. You got 10 days before the game. I will play Adam Humphreys if he clears concussion protocol and he feels he's ready to go. I will play him. I'm not holding him back unless I just absolutely have to. If I don't have no other choice, I will not hold him back. I will play him. Uh, let's see. Taking a look at some other, uh, seeing some other questions, uh, that came up. Let's see. <laughs> I like Joseph said, are you ready? Titan fans. I said, are you ready? <laughs> and we better be ready. We definitely better be ready. So, um, and, um, I mean, we, we ain't got no choice. It's Thursday night football, primetime television. We better be ready. Um, let's see. Trying to see if there's many more questions uh, that I could put out. Give me just a moment. Well, my question to you is this. I'll ask y'all a question or two. Do you think the Titan def if if the Titan defense has a good game against ball against Indianapolis, would you say the defense has turned a corner to becoming a good defense, or do you have to see more? And Eric Berry says, "Why is Henry not getting the ball as much?" I mean, Derrick Henry is getting the ball about twenty times a game. 
And, you know, I know y'all noticed that it looked like Derrick Henry was sitting out most of the fourth quarter, and it looked like they had him on a pitch count, even though they really could have went to him more. Uh, I kind of understand that because, I mean, the game was kind of in hand, and they were figuring save him for t- for Thursday night because that's when they'll need him most. I think that's why they were doing that. They wanted to rest him uh, and everything because, I mean, you know, he had over 160 carries. Um, and, and I'm going to see how many carries he has right as of right now at this very moment. Uh, how many carries does he have? Because he's on pace to be over 300 carries. And I believe that is something that the team, excuse me, that the team is definitely trying to uh, make sure that doesn't happen as far as him having so many carries that um, he doesn't have any gas left in the tank. Right now, Derrick Henry has had 182 carries. And we're at the halfway point, which means he is nearly on pace for 364 carries. He is on pace for 364 carries. Now, Deonta Foreman and Jeremy McNichols does take some pressure off of him uh, with that. So, excuse me for that. But, I mean, honestly enough, we got to be careful not to um, wear Derrick Henry out. But if we got the lead in the fourth quarter, bang with him. Just let the big dog eat, and he can eat plenty in this game. Let's see. Zach says, I would say it's on the right track, but I would like to see them play the Ravens first before I call them a good defense. I can understand that. I can understand that. No problem now. Let's see. Uh, Brandon. Brandon Bauer says, need Janu. He's a difference maker for sure, but not pass it to him a lot. When they do, it's always big yardage. I know they're using him for blocking more, but definitely a catch threat. Well, they went to Janu a little bit in the second half, and he caught a touchdown. And he caught a nice pass over the middle and uh, got them into the range where he could score. So, I mean, I know he they're using him a lot to help block uh, and everything, but... Janu is more than just a a pass catching threat, which he is. He's also a decent run blocker. And we're going to need him now more than ever with uh, Michael Pruitt down, uh, which, I mean, Jeff Swain, uh, formerly of Jacksonville, will be caught, will be put up uh, on the roster as well uh, with that. So, I mean, you know. John, who does need to be more involved in the offense, but he does have to help with blocking, especially with Ty Sambrello, uh or uh, Dennis Kelly. But, again, John, who I think can be used a little bit more, and I think they're going to work ways to make sure he does get more. Um, let's see, AZ Big says, do you think Isaiah Wilson will play this season? No, I don't. I don't think he'll play this season. He He's not ready. He's not ready. Let's see. Jane Brown says, how many carries do you think Henry will get? I'll say 20 to 25. 20 to 25 carries. Uh, D uh, says on, um, let's see. We are who we are on defense. We are lacking leadership on defense, but I think it will come. I disagree with that, actually. Uh, with that, I mean, yes, we don't have Jarrell Casey or Logan Ryan or Wesley Woodyard anymore, but that is where Rashawn Evans or Jayon Brown got to step up into that role. Big Jeff is trying to step into a leadership uh, type of role as well. Uh, in the secondary, uh, Kevin Byard or Kenny Vaccaro definitely needs uh, to continue to uh, ascend up in leadership. So that's something that both uh, of those guys can definitely do uh, is to help in the leadership, especially of the secondary room, uh, without a doubt. Let's see. But I think we're a scrappy, opportunistic D. Um, you know, um, 
I just think that defensively, if we start getting stops on third down more, it's going to benefit us in the long run. I mean, yes, did Chicago convert some like third and twos or third and fours? Yes, they did. But a lot of the times the Titans put them in third and long, and those third and longs did not come easy. Which I'm, that's why I'm glad Derek King is in uh, in this instance to um to to you know to help uh, with that situation. But let's see, I might be able to take one more question, but I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to get into the preview uh, a little bit. Uh, with the Titans and Colts Thursday night football, it's a big, big night, a big, big game. First place uh, in the AFC South is on the line. Uh, can you imagine what happens if the Titans win this game? If the Titans win this game, they're up two games on the Colts, put them in trouble, and really has the uh, and really has the front and is really in front and has the best lead to the division. So that's going to be important. Winner of this game is in first place of the division and has an advantage. Even though we play the same Colts team in two weeks. um, Yes, in two weeks. So this is going to be a tough one. And I'm going to quickly go over my blue enforcer four points to victory. And, yeah, I know this is always something that I like to do. I like to get my four points, and I'm going to give away a key matchup uh, in the game. <laughs> Keith Hill says, uh, Colts are about to get a butt whooping like they've never seen. Titans win convincingly. I hope so. Uh, Zach Carpenter says, what are your thoughts about possibly having 16 teams? Um, it you know, and that really depends on COVID. Uh, if COVID costs teams games, that's why they may have an extra team in each conference in the playoff. Because right now, the Indianapolis Colts at five and three are on the outside looking in as of right now. But if they win this game, then it puts us on the outside looking in, and they're in the driver's seat. So that's something we definitely cannot do. Um, let's see. Uh, Weezy Bowski uh, says, YouTube issues, I'll try to catch the playback uh, and everything. Hey, I appreciate it. I apologize about any technical difficulties. I'm not sure what's happening with YouTube. Again, if you can, come on over to Facebook uh, and uh, enjoy the show. But Point number one, the Tennessee Titans in this game need to find themselves. Find yourself. Remember who you are. Remember who you are. Control the clock. Run the football. Attack this secondary. I will not say attack at will, but you need to attack um, this secondary. Get after them because they do have a uh, a very, very good front seven. So we got to get after that secondary. Now, be, um, be smart in attacking that secondary. Don't be foolish. But at the same time, yeah, you got to attack the secondary. And just don't be afraid to be who you are. That's the main thing. Be yourself. Let's see. I'm trying to. I'm trying to see if a certain somebody else. Let's see. I believe Malik Hooker is out for the year uh, due to injury, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, he's right now out for the year. He's on injured. He's on IR. So yes, remember who you are. Be in attack mode and do not let up. Run the, 
control the clock, run the ball, keep their offense off the field, and be in position to um and to be in a position to make plays. That's what they have to do. Point number two, release the dogs. Let A.J. Brown and Derrick Henry get the football and do their thing. And I'll even say Corey Davis, too, because he's probably going to be playing with a very, very heavy heart. Let the big dogs eat. You do that, we could be in very good shape. We could definitely do that. One of the key matchups, uh, two of the key matchups that I'm looking at, number one is Derrick Henry against that front seven. Uh, the front seven being with Danico Autry, with Grover Stewart, who is very good, uh, DeForest Buckner, Je- uh, Justin Houston, uh, Oriki uh, is a linebacker that's very good, and of course, Darius Leonard, uh, to name a few. You know, this, this defense is one of the best. They are like number one defense in the league. So you got to... Um, What's the word that I'm looking for Uh, besides focus? You got to be focused. You got to be zoned in. You have got to be 100% in for this game. And another matchup that I like I'm looking at is offensive coordinator Arthur Smith versus Colts defensive coordinator Matt Eberfuss. And there was an interesting stat that came out on uh, NFL Network. Uh, Ever since Epifuss has been uh, the defensive coordinator, I believe since 2018, the Colts have yet to give up one 100-yard rusher, except one. They gave up one 100-yard rusher since 2018. Can you take a wild guess at who it is? And if you don't know, well, you're about to get some knowledge because the answer to that question is good old 22 Derrick Henry. He is the only running back in the league since Matt Eberfuss took over to gain 100 yards on the Indianapolis Colts. And so, let's see. So, shout out definitely um, to Derrick Henry. and. Um, Yes, he's the only one that got 100 yards against a Matt Eberfuss defense. Now, number three, going to the defensive side of the ball. Hands up and show out. Show out on Thursday night football. That defense that played against Chicago needs to be here against Indianapolis. You're going up against a very good offensive line. And one thing that I will say, you may not be able to get a bunch of sacks, but try everything in your power to get in his face and get your hands up, bat some balls down, or tip them where they could cause some interceptions. That would be huge for this Tennessee Titans team. So hands up and show out. Balls to the wall. And last but not least, is create turnovers. And, you know, we're one of the top teams in the league in turnover differential if we're not the number one team uh, in the uh, nation uh, due to, um, yeah. So create turnovers. We're one of the tops in the league at that. And, you know, basically make Rivers throw you a pick or two. And also Jonathan Taylor, their running back, he does have a case of fumbleitis. He does have some fumble issues. So definitely try to punch that ball out of his hands. You punch it out of his hands, we got a shot at recovering it. So that's the important things to do. Find yourself, release the dogs on offense, on defense, hands up and show out, and create turnovers. That is going to be key. We create turnovers. We give our offense more opportunities. And the matchups that I'm looking at, one is second is the secondary versus Trey Burton.
So definitely got to watch out for the wide receivers as well as the tight end. And, um, I mean, there's just, there's ample opportunities. There's a lot of opportunities to create some turnovers. There's a lot of off opportunities to, um, maybe pick Phillip Rivers off or, um, get it to where it's going the other way. That's something that we have to do. Now, as far as, uh, again, this is the matchup secondary versus the wide receivers of Trey Burton. Jack Doyle will not play in this game, but you still got um, Mo Ali Cox, and you also have Trey Burton, who's very good. And a matchup that I'm definitely looking forward to is, again, Big Jeff versus Quinn Nelson. That is going to be a great, great matchup. And basically, this all this defensive line with Daquan Jones, Jack Crawford, uh, Clowney, Landry, uh, when Roberson's on the field, that's going to be something. Keith Hill says, "Let ninety-eight take matters into his own hands." I agree. Uh, Facebook says Shane Bowen's defense needs to destroy Frank Wright's offense. Easier said than done, but I agree it does need to be done. So now it's time for my prediction. And this is what I think I'm predicting this team to do in this game. Tune in tomorrow, y'all. Here's my big announcement. So um, I was speaking with um, the president of the Tennessee Titans uh, fan club here in Memphis, uh, my guy Preston Rounds. And uh, he really, uh, I guess the uh, the fan club really wants me to be there. They miss me and everything. You know, I've been away due to COVID. Uh, and everything with that, but I will be broadcasting uh, live from Indigo uh, Nightclub. That is the Titans, uh, Tennessee Titans of Memphis fan club um, headquarters. So that's where I'm going to be uh, tomorrow. I'm going to do a pregame. Uh, I'm going to do a pregame show. Uh, I'm going to probably try to start around 6 o'clock, uh, 6, 6.30 for the pregame. And then I'm going to do a quick halftime show. And then I'm also going to do a post game. So I'm definitely going to be doing that um, on YouTube, on Facebook. And I'm also going to be doing it on Instagram uh, as well. So definitely be looking out for that. I'm going to be putting some information out. So get ready for it. Uh, tomorrow night, I will be broadcasting live from Indigo uh, Nightclub tomorrow. Um, Pre-game, halftime post game. So definitely get ready for that. And then I'll give you, we'll probably talk a little bit more about these matchups that I was talking about and also uh, the blue the uh, four points to victory. And I will give my actual prediction before the game. But to end the show, my blue bombshell, first of all, I got to say, uh, we was talking about it earlier. Um, rest in peace to Corey Davis's brother, Titus Davis, uh, who passed away due to kidney cancer at the age of 27. Also, uh, rest in peace to an absolute legend. And um, an absolute legend uh, in the game show world. Um, I'm going to see if I can uh, do something for you. As um, this show gets ready uh, to end. So, y'all yeah, give me just a minute. I'm going to do a little something for Alex Trebek. Uh, definitely like watching Jeopardy. Uh, definitely one of my favorite game shows uh, that I enjoy watching. You know, definitely trying to test my knowledge and my skill uh, to see if I'll be able to figure it out. You know, know some things uh, and everything. So definitely am a, a big fan of Jeopardy. Um, Yeah, give me just a second. Um, just having some issue, but yeah, definitely gonna miss Alex Trebek. Um, 
I mean, a great game show host. Um, yeah, I see uh, YouTube is having some trouble. So, yeah, I definitely could see uh, that because I know one of my video, uh, the video that I was trying to bring up was not playing uh, with that. So uh, I may try to see if I can have that up for tomorrow uh, for the pregame show, a little tribute to Alex Trebek. He was a great game show host. Um, and, I mean, I really enjoy watching him um on TV he's going to definitely be missed i don't know who they're going to get to replace or if jeopardy is going to continue on um but i hope it does and i hope they have a host that can live up to his legacy there's going to be some tough shoes to fill um but everybody that is going to be uh, the show for tonight um i thank everybody for tuning in to titans and truth again i apologize for the technical difficulties on youtube uh hopefully uh that gets back together for tomorrow so moni cartel i thank everybody uh for tuning in hopefully i'll check the playback and see if it's gonna be okay uh with that but again tomorrow night and i'm gonna put this out on facebook i will be broadcasting live from indigo nightclub i'm gonna do a pre-game halftime post game and i'm also going to be joining up with uh tighten up load uh for a post game show as well so thank y'all for tuning in to titans of truth i hate i don't have my outgoing music uh because of um youtube having some issues but y'all have a good rest of the night and y'all tighten up